you are listening to the EPT Works Listen, Love, Give podcast. Hi, I'm Dr. Annette Cardioli, the Forgiveness Doctor. I'm here to help you create phenomenal health, happiness, and new life with energy, intuition, and forgiveness. EPT is short for Emotional Polarity Technique, an innovative holistic emotional therapy that will change your life for good. You can subscribe to this podcast, get free EPT training at eptworks.com, and like us on Facebook. Today is episode two. We are talking about healing obsessive compulsive disorder with emotional polarity technique. You will learn what is OCD, why people become obsessed, and how emotional polarity technique can help eliminate obsessive compulsive disorder. First, let's talk about what OCD is. OCD, uh, obsessive compulsive disorder, is basically a problem where a person fixates with an obsession as a distraction from something else in their life they feel powerless to do anything about or control. So a lot of people, if you know someone with OCD, there are people who will wash their hands multiple times during the day to keep them germ free. They sometimes will keep all the cushions on the sofa straight, or they are compulsively keeping everything perfectly neat in their house or their environment. These are some of the behaviors that go with OCD. Sometimes they will only wear a certain color clothing. They're pretty much a prisoner of their obsession. Another way that obsessive compulsive disorder plays out is where someone has obsessive thinking patterns, where they are constantly having something run through their head over and over, or they have terrible thoughts that torment them, thoughts of hurting someone they love over and over, or somebody dying in a car accident, or failing at something huge, and or losing their hair. So they're constantly obsessing or thinking about something that torments them and distracts them. So another example would be of this distraction. A child may feel angry with mom because she isn't there for her. The mom isn't there for the child and the child feels angry. The child can't express the anger or denies it because she wants to be a support for the mom and she loves mom and doesn't want to alienate mom any further by having this anger or expressing this feeling. The energy of the unexpressed anger in the child is caught in the body and expresses as the obsession or fixated thoughts. The child cannot deal with the anger, so she produces a fixation that can be worked on or treated endlessly. For example, if I have germs on my hand or dirty hands, I can wash the hands. They're clean, except in a few minutes, they might be dirty again and I'll have to wash them again. So that's the endless hand washing. Or someone who constantly goes to doctors because they feel like they're sick. I get sick and then I go This is something I can actually take care of. I have control over this. I'll go to a doctor and I'll get well, or I'll get a pill or I'll get some fix. And then I feel like I'm in control. So really uh, this fixation that people have with OCD is it's just this colossal distraction from something in their life, current or in the past, that they had no control over. Possibly they had a violent or an alcoholic parent, and as a child, they couldn't go against that parent, so they had to internalize all the feelings that you would normally have when someone acts violent around you. And then that comes out in this fixation in the mind or in a behavior that is obsessive and endless. The parent who has the violent behavior, the child has no power to change or fix and the child can't leave the home and move somewhere else. So there's this total powerlessness in their history or in their memory. And then as they grow up, whenever anything makes them feel powerless, they go into the obsessive pattern, uh, the obsessive thinking or trying to do something that they feel they actually can control. So these problems or these distractions are something that they can work on and can be treated endlessly. It's endless because 
it's not the real problem. Having germs on their hand and washing their hands is not the real problem. Or having an obsessive thought in their mind of something they can go over and over. Or straightening the silverware or the pillow cushions. This obsessive behavior or thinking is nothing but a distraction from a deeper experience in this person's life where they truly had no control and couldn't do anything to change the situation. Now, when we're doing EPT, which by the way, is amazing at helping people either eliminate completely the obsessive compulsive disorder or minimize it so greatly that their quality of life improves incredibly. So when you're doing emotional polarity technique, if you go to someone who is doing emotional polarity technique, because you really need to do this with someone who's trained with EPT, they're going to begin with asking your body, what stage of healing are you in with this obsessive compulsive behavior or obsessive compulsive disorder? And after they identify what stage they're in, then they're going to do EPT. So what you need to know about the obsessive thinking or behavior is it is a distraction for a feeling that was determined to be too dangerous to feel by the brain. Basically, when we do EPT, we identify an original event. So using muscle testing and techniques in EPT, we can actually identify very quickly in a laser-like fashion the original time where this out of control situation happened with the person. And it may be currently with a spouse or a job situation, but it is usually founded in their childhood where there was something out of control in their environment and they could do nothing about it. And after they grow up, things in their environment, anything, anything that feels out of control, possibly they can't pay a bill or they're having trouble training their dog, anything that feels out of control, or they can't get their husband to do what they want him to do. So anything that puts them in that state of feeling out of control will trigger their obsessive behavior. And pretty much that's on a daily basis because most there's not a whole lot that you can control all the time in your life. So the obsessive behavior becomes the distraction so that they don't feel a, the sense of being out of control that relates to a childhood picture where they truly were out of control and had no say in it. Now, once an EPT practitioner lasers in on the original memory, then they're going to do some simple body work. And then as always, the key healing takes place in emotional polarity technique with forgiveness statements. So some forgiveness statements that you might hear when working with someone with obsessive compulsive disorder, or if you're working with an EPT practitioner, these are some of the statements that you might use to help unwind or heal this pattern of obsessive compulsive behavior. I forgive myself for believing by pouring my thoughts or behavior into this obsessive pattern. I can take away the anger, abandonment I feel with my mom. I forgive myself for believing I have to deny my negative emotions or feelings to have love and attention or to avoid abandonment. I forgive myself for believing when I feel abandoned or angry, pouring all my attention into this obsessive behavior or thought pattern will take the hurt away. I forgive myself for believing it's all my fault. I forgive myself for believing I'm not allowed to feel or to be angry. I forgive myself for believing that my dad or mom is the only person allowed to be angry and no one else in the family has a right to be angry or to claim hurt or abandonment. That statement is pretty common with people who are in abusive situations where one person in the family, the abuser, is allowed to be angry and no one else is allowed to be angry. So all that natural response of feeling angry or afraid or releasing emotion 
is repressed or turned inward, and that drives a lot of this obsessive thinking. I forgive myself for believing that by denying my negative emotions or feelings, I can protect my mom or another family member, including myself. So a lot of times the child, if they've got a mom who is very emotionally unstable or depressed or sad or really struggling, the child will deny or repress their feelings, their negative feelings, their sad feelings. And in doing this, they feel they are protecting mom because they've decided mom can't handle my feelings. She can't even handle her own feelings. So the child then in repressing their feelings out of a need to protect an unstable or hyper emotional or depressed or sad or um, abused mother or another family member. So I forgive myself for believing it is not safe or permissible for me to express my negative emotions or feelings. So that would be somebody who's in a situation in childhood where there's an abuser, either mom or dad or are abusing them. And so it's not safe to be angry or to have the feelings that you're really having because you could get hurt. I forgive my mom or dad for making it unsafe for me to be honest with my feelings or emotions. I forgive myself for believing I am being helpful to others when I deny my true feelings or emotions or thoughts or ideas. I give my mom or my dad or my husband permission to forgive me for blaming them for my feelings of abandonment and anger. I give myself permission to say yes to these hidden or denied emotions and I call them up and I release them to divine love and gratitude. Without this pattern, I am free to be honest with my feelings. I am free to stop using my obsessive behavior as a distraction from the real things that upset me right now and in my past. I am free to accept that I am a real person with my own thoughts, ideas, and dreams. I am free to accept that I am as important as everyone else in this family. I am free to feel safe even when I feel disharmony in myself or another person. I am free to forgive myself for believing that I have to create distractions like obsessive behavior to feel safe and in control. Five reasons I am grateful for having this problem or pattern of obsessive behavior in my life. Even though I didn't know it, the obsessive pattern gave me a safe place. Another reason I'm grateful for having this problem, this problem can be a reminder signaling when I am holding back from feeling my true feelings and expressing what I'm really going through and what I need. Another reason I'm grateful, I can now see how remarkable my mind is. Another reason I'm grateful for this problem, it points to the real feelings that I have hidden my real fears, things that I can't control, it points to. So these are some of the healing statements that an EPT practitioner will make with someone who they're helping to heal and release the pattern of obsessive compulsive disorder from their life. Of course, usual basic EPT, specific forgiveness for the story that unfolds also impacts OCD. There is a case study on video where I was working with a lady who was adopted and had problems with her adopted dad. She didn't even tell me that OCD was a symptom in her life. In her follow-up interview, she was astounded at the change from that problem that took place almost immediately after one hour of EPT. In the video, she tells me I have no idea how her thoughts had been constantly consumed. She was right. I had no idea because she didn't tell me that problem. Basic EPT still worked magic. Thanks for listening 
If you know someone who is suffering with obsessive compulsive disorder, please share this podcast with them and introduce them to emotional polarity technique. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe to this podcast, like us on Facebook, and go get your free training at eptworks.com. I'm Dr. Annette Cargioli, the Forgiveness Doctor. Until next time, listen, love, give. EPT Works.